the asterism that points you directly to the Milky Way core, next on Milky Way Wednesday. Hey guys, welcome back to Milky Way Wednesday. I'm Marion King, and tonight we're talking about the Summer Triangle. I just showed you a video of a time lapse of inverted clouds going through the Faroe Islands as the sun is setting, and then the aurora that was just oh, fantastic out there. I'm not just showing you that because they're cool. Mostly, I'm showing you that because it's cool. But the reason I bring it up is because while I was on the top of that hill in Bordeaux, on the island of Bordeaux, out there in the Faroe Islands, looking out from the clocker viewpoint, where, where's the band of the Milky Way going to be? Typically, you and I probably already know that, okay, I see Sagittarius and I see Scorpius. I know where the Milky Way is going to be. Scorpius is here. Milky Way is going to be to the left of that. And boom. If it's later in the year, I'm looking at Sagittarius as most of Scorpius has started to set on the horizon. And Sagittarius is that little tea kettle constellation that's right underneath the Milky Way core. And I look for that. When I was up in the Faroe Islands, though, I didn't see any planets. Maybe I saw Saturn, but I, I couldn't pick it out. I think it was too low on the horizon. As I'm so far north, what else can I use? There's no Scorpius, there's no constellation Sagittarius, and there's no constellation Cassiopeia over there to notice because it was so early at night, it was still low or just still too faded. I, I, I couldn't make anything out. But I was able to make out an asterism, friend, that we see all the time in the sky. I said asterism. What is an asterism? Is it a constellation? Well, simply defined, an asterism is a prominent pattern or group of stars that are that usually have a name, but they typically are smaller than a constellation. So they have a popularized name that people reference like Summer Triangle, but it's not a constellation. The trio of Deneb, Vega, and Altair is not a constellation, it's an asterism. So if you hear people say that's an asterism, don't think that that's a synonym for constellation. It's actually another classification of these patterns of stars that we humans see in the night sky. And so let's look at the Summer Triangle. The Summer Triangle is made up of Vega, Deneb, and Altair. When you look at these stars, Vega, Deneb, Altair, you ask, why do they stand out so obviously? Is it just that they're bright? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much just that they're really, really bright. When you look at a list of the top 20 stars in magnitude in our night sky, Vega, Deneb, and Altair stand out in the top 20. Using this list from Wikipedia, you can see that the sun is the number one bright star in the sky, which is, yeah, Grateful that they added that, but it feels just snarky that they even did. It's just <laughs> literal science at its best. The, the brightest other stars in the night sky would be Sirius number one, and if number one is Sirius, that makes Vega five, Altair number 12, and then Deneb number 19. It's no wonder that we've created an asterism for these three stars. I noticed this when I was in the Faroe Islands, despite the fact that the moon was going to be coming up and it was making the sky brighter and the twilight period, I could see those three stars standing out and I recognized the summer triangle and thought, okay, looking at this, where does the Milky Way band cross it? It's near it, isn't it? Isn't it going through it? I knew it went through it, but how? Looking down at my image, you can see how the Milky Way, it nicely travels right through, right underneath Deneb and on through above Altair. The length of the triangle is longer towards Deneb, from Deneb Vega out to Altair. Altair is the furthest point of the triangle and it will point you towards the Milky Way core. So when you find the milk, when you find that triangle and you go, well, okay, where are the lines of the stars going to go? 
you can basically do this. It's somewhere inside all of these right here going this way. And if you're completely lost and you look up and you see the three star triangle, the furthest point tells you that's where the core is. If you're so lost as to wh which side of the sky the core is even going to be, you can look at the northern, you can look at this summer triangle and see that, okay, there's Altair. That band of the Milky Way is going to be over there. So then the question is, it's called the summer triangle. The summer triangle. Is it only visible during three months in the year? Oh, no, no, not hardly. Let's go to Stellarium and look at that. Using Stellarium now, I've got the sky, the night sky set up with south here at the bottom of the screen, east and west. Altair I've selected so we can keep an eye on it as it goes throughout the night sky and know that that's, that's Deneb and Vega Altair. Milky Way coming right down through it. So again, that Milky Way is going through on a thin end of the Milky Way band around Deneb, gets thicker towards Altair, and then heads towards the core, which is all the way down here. So you can see how it's not exactly on top of the core. When you're looking at the core and you look straight up, you're going to see the band of the Milky Way, and that's towards the you know, middle part of the band, really, that summer triangle. So that summer triangle is a bit of a misnomer, as these three stars you can see throughout all of the months of the year with with, you know, December having some tougher times. Look at this in December. See how low they are on the horizon at 730? So here's the sunset. Altair is nearly at the bottom of the horizon. Let's just look at it flat. There it is, low on the horizon. We're seeing Venus even. That's how low it is on the sunset. And now at 640, that thing is right on top. So December. It's the only time really that the summer triangle isn't quite the triangle that takes up the whole night sky. That asterism goes away after a couple hours of the night in the, in the winter months. But December, you don't see it much, but in January, you do see it rise. Let's see, Altair, come on. Oh, and it's there on the far east, and it did rise before, before the, the sun has risen. So in January, you can see it. February, you'll see it travel. As it gets through to March, now over here in April, let's go later later in the night. Let's see the Milky Way while we're at it. Look at that summer triangle, high in the sky, high in the band of our panorama, Milky Way going right through it. So this summer triangle asterism you guys can use to see, oh man, I'm not making out any of my other landmarks. How can I find that Milky Way and how do I plan my shot? Oh, here's the triangle, and you know that that pathway, when you look towards that furthest away star, is going to guide you this direction to the Milky Way. That Milky Way core that you're composing in frame. So you can get an extra bearing, even though there's not enough darkness to actually make out the band of the Milky Way, you can use that asterism to find the actual band of the Milky Way and where it goes and connects with the horizon behind your foreground subject. Love the fact that that showed up when it did out there in the Faroe Islands. I had a basic idea. I wasn't sure how far by Lervoik it would show up and whether or not the little bit of light pollution in Lervoik it actually would block the view of the Milky Way. But I knew it was going to be over there. And so we were set up and having this awesome opportunity to capture Aurora on one side, Milky Way on the other, and this inversion of clouds. <laughs> yes, the moon is up. Yes, it's a little bit too bright, but check out this image of my panorama of that shot. Even though it's not the most perfect image, man, it is so cool to see all of that in one shot. <laughs> it's a fun panorama, and I was stoked to be up there in Bordeaux and the Faroe Islands. Man, I love that workshop, being out in the Faroe Islands. Okay, enough about my stuff. It's time for a moment of envy. These are brought to you by MilkyWayPhotographers.com, dedicated to Milky Way photographers like you guys. And if you go into our photos section, you'll see everybody's gallery who have uploaded images, and you can go through a ton of really neat Milky Way shots. 
Now, today it comes from Joe Choi. Joe Choi, he has an awesome image here that I'm about to share with you, but follow him over on Instagram. You can see him right there, Aurora Hunter Joe. Follow him now. Add, let's go 441. Let's get this back up to 500. Let's break 500 with them, guys. So, Joe Choi, I am envious of this shot. <laughs> now, let me give a little backstory. Joe writes that this comes from February. So you got a February Milky Way for one. It's on the East Coast with all the light pollution in the East Coast. Yes, yes, you can make it happen. And in this time of year, February, you're looking east right off of the coastline, and you're getting the benefit of the very dark skies out over the ocean. So we can see the Milky Way with great clarity. He can also capture this lighthouse. The big part of the story, the big Easter egg element of this image is that the lighthouse got stuck. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, he says, this lighthouse light was stuck in one position, just going... Instead of moving around, he had this opportunity of creating a composition around the lightsaber beam of the lighthouse. And oh, it's so cool. It is so, so neat. So talking about the composition points that I made last week, we're looking at a foreground that potentially could just be this. And then you've got your Milky Way, right? Well, how do you make... Everything work out great together when you have a foreground as boring as flat and blah. Well, break the plane, I said. Break the plane. And boy, does he ever. Breaks the plane. Breaks the... Oh, he doesn't break the plane there. It's broken. It doesn't work. No, 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 no. This is awesome. He's gone up and over the top third. He's broken the plane with the line of the Milky Way as well as this very strong structure. And as you're looking at this, you have a top frame. Well, uh, there's nothing in that top frame. Well, why would he keep so much? Well, obviously, for one, it's this right here. The beam of light that crosses from top corner to bottom corner is way too cool and making sure he balances out his positive and negative space he gives us a space here let's do another color he gives us a space up here where there's just nothing and then all of this is positive space and this is positive space Let, let's uh, do green let's do green on here uh, do, 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 do. positive space all around here all around there this is a little bit of positive. It kind of shows context of the ground. You know that this is where the lighthouse is anchored in. So you got that positive space there versus all of the really, really, really still interesting and well-balanced negative space that goes in all of this. So with all of this combined, the composition becomes absolutely brilliant. And it's hard, it's hard not to love this look. Oh, man. Joe Choi, what a fantastic shot, man. I'm really envious of this shot. February Milky Way. I want to emphasize, guys, February. It's November. No, it's October. It's October. We're looking at the Milky Way going away soon, and we're going to have that one-month hiatus of the core. And then January, you really get, like, minutes. And so... February, that's the beginning of the best times to get out there, especially if you can get a low horizon in the east and nothing blocking your core that comes up early in the night. Ah, I love it. So Milky Way photographers, let's get out there and get as much Milky Way as you can October, November, and then enjoy January and February Milky Way in 2020. Oh, we've got a whole new season of Milky Way coming. And Joe, what a great image right here. Love it, man. Follow Joe. Go to Aurora Hunter Joe at Instagram and follow him today. Thanks, guys, as always, for joining me for Milky Way Wednesday. I'm Aaron King, and I love celebrating you Milky Way photographers. Just get out there. Your camera is good enough. Just get a panorama. Get a stack. Get whatever you need to to get the most clarity that you want. Don't stress. Just go. Get out there and have an adventure. So, guys, thanks for watching Milky Way Wednesday. I'm Aaron King. See you next week. And stay tuned for other tutorials that will be coming up on the website. See ya. Cloud cover here is pretty solid. So hopefully the two and a half hour drive is going to be worth it. We made it here. 
Let's find our spot. This is called Swinging Bridge South Campground. It does suck that I can't do more of these in the daytime. 